TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's security cabinet votes in favor of Prime Minister Yair Lapid's plan to finalize a maritime agreement with Lebanon as soon as possible. The United States announces its intention to reassess its relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. OPEC Plus defends its decision to make significant cuts in oil production, rejecting allegations of alignment with Russia. Jerusalem's security cabinet voted in favor of Prime Minister Yair Lapid's summary of a draft agreement for delineation of Israel's maritime boundary with Lebanon, highlighting the importance and urgency in ratifying the deal. At the culmination of the security cabinet's meeting, which was held earlier today in the afternoon, the prime minister's office in Jerusalem published Lapid's summary, which notes, quote, there is importance and urgency in reaching the maritime agreement between Israel and Lebanon at this time. The members of the Security Cabinet expressed their support for the government of Israel to advance the agreement. Nevertheless, while most of the Security Cabinet members voted in favor of the transitional premier's summary, Interior Minister Ayala Chaked, who vocally opposed a deal out of political considerations, opted to abstain. Meanwhile, Israel's opposition leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, leveled vigorous denunciation directed at Yair Lapid and his provisional government, insisting that the emerging U.S.-mediated agreement constitutes a blatant surrender. לכל הדרישות של חיזבאללה. ביום שבו נכנס לפיד ללשכת ראש הממשלה, שיגר נסרה למלטים להסדת גז בשטחנו, דבר שהוא לא עז לעשות תחת הממשלות בראשותי. הוא איים על לפיד, ציטוט, בכוח הנשק אחייב את ישראל להיכנע במסע ומתן. לפיד נבהל ונכנע. לפיד שהתנגד למתווה הגז שחבריי ואני הבאנו לטובת אזרחי ישראל, מתווה שהפך את ישראל למעצמת גז עולמית, עכשיו ממהר להוציא את הגז מהמים לטובת חיזבאללה. ואיך לפיד מנסה להצדיק את הכניעה הזאת? הוא אומר שהיא נדרשת על מנת להוציא את הגז מכריש. אני רוצה להזכיר ללפיד שמאגר כריש נמצא בעומק השטח שלנו, שעבודות הפיתוח שם התחילו כבר לפני חמש שנים, ושמעולם לא חלמנו לבקש רשות מנסראללה כדי להפעיל אותו. איך אמר דיוויד פרידמן, שגריר ארה״ב לשעבר, שטיפל בנושא? לבנון קיבלה 100%, ישראל קיבלה 0%. הוא צדק. זה איננו הסכם היסטורי, זוהי כניעה היסטורית. זוהי מכירת החיסול של לפיד. With less than three weeks before Israel's upcoming legislative election, Netanyahu further asserted that Lapid's surrender to Hezbollah renders him unfit to serve as prime minister. Meanwhile, in Lebanon, Hezbollah's Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah announced in a film address to his followers from an undisclosed bunker in Beirut that his Iranian proxy will remain vigilant until an agreement is signed, proclaiming further that the coming hours are crucial. <laughs> الموافق والمؤيد لهذا الاتفاق ولهذا التفاهم بالنسبة للمقاومة تكون الأمور قد أنجزت لكن إلى ذلك الحين إلى ذلك الحين نحن يجب أن نقب أن نبقى يقظين it is interesting to know that while the leader of the Iranian proxy Hezbollah clearly mentioned expected benefits to emerge from the agreement for his internationally recognized terror organization, Israel reportedly is expected to receive written assurances from the United States that the fiscal benefits from Lebanon's offshore gas exploits would not benefit Hezbollah, among other security-related guarantees. Moreover, in a phone conversation between Premier Yair Lapid and U.S. President Joe Biden early this morning, 
The American head of state emphasized to the Israeli leader his personal commitment to both Israel's security and regional stability, and also added that the two leaders' ability to work together and reach the referred to agreement is a testament to the strong and unbreakable bond between the two leaders themselves and between Israel and the United States. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Antony Blinken addressed the emerging agreement, claiming it will serve regional peace, stability, and prosperity. After months of mediation by the United States, the governments of Israel and Lebanon reached agreement to establish a permanent maritime boundary between them. This uh, opens up the prospect for the peaceful development of very significant uh, energy fields, uh, it will bring new uh, energy to, to market, not only for both countries, but quite literally around the world. Uh, President Biden spoke to Prime Minister Lapid and President Un today to uh, congratulate them on reaching this agreement. Um, and I also want to say a special thanks to our allies and partners in France who were critical uh, to getting there, as well as to our own uh, special envoy, Amos Hochstein, for tireless work in bringing this agreement to fruition. It is important to highlight France's active role in the U.S. broker negotiations. While it is expected to serve as one of the guarantors of this deal, Paris is also said to greatly benefit from the emerging agreement since its multinational corporation Total Energies has been granted the rights to engage in gas exploration within the boundaries of Lebanon's economic waters. However, for these activities to manifest, an agreement must be ratified rapidly, since parliamentary elections in Israel and respective presidential elections in Lebanon are scheduled to be held in roughly three weeks' time. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is reassessing Washington's relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia over the latter's decision as part of the OPEC Plus Group to cut oil production, which is expected to drive energy prices upward, including in the United States, and worsen the energy crisis in Europe in particular. We have said, the president has said from the beginning of his administration that we need to, uh, you know, redefine this relationship that we have with Saudi Arabia. This is something that he has said uh, for some time. And because of their action, they took this action just last week, the OPEC plus decision that they've made. And, uh, and you know, I have said this, I've said this plenty of times uh, at this podium already, is that we see that they're, they're aligning their energy policies uh, with Russia. Look, I'm not going to get ahead of this. Uh, you will hear from us when we lay out uh, what, uh, what actions uh, we are going to take. We're going to review them. Uh, but again, I'm not going to get ahead. Uh, and this is something that we take very seriously. Allegations of the Saudi-led OPEC group's alignment with Russia was brushed off by the kingdom's top diplomat last week, who claimed that the decision by the OPEC Plus group genuinely seeks to stabilize the market. You know, our priority now is stabilizing market. Now, we could be accused of wanting to uh, influence market in a negative way. That's everybody's prerogative. We and others will see how we conduct ourselves in the months to come. If you permit me, Royal Highness, we are not endangering the energy markets. We are providing security, stability to the energy markets. At a price. Uh, everything has a price. Energy security has a price as well. Despite Saudi Arabia's efforts to convince the West that it is not aligning itself with Russia, Washington emphasized that relations with Riyadh are founded on interests. Our North Star, our guiding principle, will be to see to it that we have a relationship that serves our interests. This is not a bilateral relationship that has always served our interests. Of course, we're not a member of OPEC, but OPEC had an opportunity to take a step to see to it that supply uh, better met demand. They chose not to do that. They chose to take a step uh, that would not serve our interests, does not serve the longer term interests of countries in the region, but it cer certainly serves the shorter term interests of countries like Russia, a, a country that stands to gain, at least in the near term, 
from elevated oil prices. It is important to know that several days after the OPEC Plus decision was made, President of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, traveled to Moscow, where he met with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin. And while exchanging views on a number of global affairs, Putin also seized the opportunity to praise OPEC Plus for its decision, while further claiming that Russia merely aims to create stability on energy markets as it plans to further diminish its own gas production. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to start by voicing our deepest appreciation for TV7 Israel's family of supporters and underlying to those of you who are not aware, TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations here in Jerusalem. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Chag Sameach Vemevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.